and looking at annual gains, we need to look at both of those. And so we see influential factors, right? Um, energy prices are somewhat largely to blame here for the increase in, head, in uh, the headline for inflation. Um, like I said, that gas price increase of about 3.8%. Um, airlines were coming up on spring break, right? So a lot more people are traveling. Uh, we see prices raised about 3.6%. And um, even just food costs increase on average of about 22 So we need to see this. And I think we're going to see that trend continue. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Don't mind the eye, just a minor little thing that takes five days to get rid of and uh, very annoying. It doesn't look great, but hey, it is what it is. So, well, we got a new guest on that I know you're going to want to hear from. Her name is, your name is Mindy McIntosh and Mindy, retirement expert. And we're talking about inflation here. So uh, what's the good news on inflation? Well, we'd like to talk a lot about the good news on inflation today is, you know, consumer prices raised 3.2% um, over last. As we look at inflation, it remains elevated. You know, 10-year treasuries are about 4.1%. But I really think as we take a look at this, a uh, 0.4% increase over previous month is not, um, you know, it's not a big pitfall of, oh my gosh, we weren't prepared for this. We've been prepared. Uh, we always talk about here at the firm, just being prepared and having a plan is key. And I do think that February with the slightly higher than average um, the gains, we'll see a little bit of a, a stick shelter inflation to largely to blame for, you know, just core inflationary readings. And when we take a look at economists, this is really what we're seeing here. And I think as we get closer and closer, both measure, you know, economic forecasts, month over month increases. So we know that data, as we see even from Bloomberg and such, what does it mean? We better be saving well. We better be knowing where our funds are going. How do we have a plan and stick to the core basics is really what I think here, Carrie. Yeah. So uh, you think it's going to abate or you think it's going to get worse? Well, I think it possibly could get worse because really when we look at these measurements, um, when we are forecasting this 0.4% increase over and over with data, the core basis strips more volatility in costs of food. Uh, we see gas prices changing. And really in February, we see the climb a little bit, 0.4% over prior month. And really these 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, we feel like it's not a lot. But in the scheme of things, this is monthly. This isn't year over year. So we take a look at these monthly changes. Um, both measurements are higher than the economics had really thought were expectations. And looking at annual gains, we need to look at both of those. And so we see influential factors, right? Um, energy prices are somewhat largely to blame here for the increase in, head, in uh, the headline for inflation. Um, like I said, that gas price increase of about 3.8%. Um, airlines were coming up on spring break, right? So a lot more people are traveling. Uh, we see prices raised about 3.6%. And um, even just food costs increase on average of about 22 So we need to see this. And I think we're going to see that trend continue. All right. So higher inflation... You know, you would think with higher interest rates would come, uh, you know, lower housing prices, and yet that's the opposite. <laughs> We've really been seeing opposite there, and I think that when we take a look at housing prices on a whole, one nice thing would be is how do we actually see when we see inflation on the rise, we see interest rates changing, we're seeing that housing market fall, right, as far as how many new home buyers. Um, we're going to see that continue to scale in fluxing with the market. So when we see these interest rates higher, we're going to see more of a hold pattern there. And I really just think that the market largely expects, you know, some of the central bank to begin, you know, cutting rates maybe by June meeting time. And so we'll continue to see this. We've seen a flow to even the labor market. So with the labor market continuing to weaken some, um, it's taking people longer time to find jobs. And earlier, we're kind of in the early steps of signs here. So not such major layoffs, but just if you are looking for a new job, it's taking longer um, to kind of plan and forecast one as well. Well, you know, you mentioned travel and uh, 
the airlines have uh, been giving huge pay increases to their pilots, 40 plus percent, 50 percent, and to their uh, flight attendants and basically all their employees. So there's no place for airline prices to go, ticket prices, but up, right? We really, yeah, and we're seeing that. We're seeing it go up. We're seeing a little bit higher demand, too, in travel these days. So with the higher demand in travel, um, we are seeing even, as a firm standpoint on the financial side, more people are traveling now. Um, so they call it kind of living their best life. So, And we're seeing way too many people are actually planning time on their one or two-week vacation, on the time that they put into planning and their travel needs and hotels and what they're going to spend there. So we are always really firmly talking to folks about let's make sure that we're putting in time, plan well, retire well. We call it our focus journey to make sure do we have a budget? Do we know when our expenses are? And let's really look at, you know, if you are looking to travel more, um, we know that costs are going up. Have we, you know, on the flip side of things prepared for that? We don't want to have more credit card bills down the line. And we need to make sure we're investing and saving it up at our retirement plan making contributions to the 401ks of IRAs to save for later when you come into that distribution phase in saving for the future as well. Yeah, and uh, and trust me, uh, it's a lot closer than you uh, think. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, we have this deficit. We're adding a trillion dollars every uh, 90 days to the deficit. Something's got to give here, Right. Something's got to give. I think we're going to see a lot of this with tax rates. We talk a lot about tax strategies here. And I even say it can go on twofold, right? So in the taxes that we're paying today, um, current tax um, laws are due to sunset at the end of 2025. So we know tax rates are going up. We also know that we're going to see this um, influence, you know, all classes, right? All, all classes of citizens that are going to be paying a higher tax rates. So whether it's just on what we're spending budget-wise, um, extra trips, travel plans, our food, gasoline. So not only just those, but as we take a look at the CPI, it's also going to pertain to when we're at withdraw strategy inside of retirement. Where's our income coming from? How do we diversify asset classes? And let's make sure that we're really careful of the legislative risks that we are facing here. And you're absolutely right there, Carrie, to make sure that when we're in even withdraw our contribution strategies, are we being as tax efficient as possible? Because I feel we are due to pay heavier taxes in the future, and and those probably are going up. So we need to plan accordingly. All right. So market. So where do you what are you supposed to do in this inflationary environment? How are you? Do you you know it's hard enough to make ends meet. How do you up your contributions to your retirement plan? Absolutely right. So as we are taking a look at this you know environment, your dollars and spending is as far as it used to. Right. So we know that things are costing more. Um, food is costing more, services are costing more. So I think that if we can really focus on spending the first hour of every day just investing into your own future and putting that away for your retirement savings, and if I can encourage any of you reti- to retire and plan to retire in a tax-free envelope. So if you have Roth 401k, Roth 403b options, please contribute there. You'd be glad you did so that when you're in your withdrawal strategy, um, just think of that. If you're in a 20% tax bracket and you can save 20 more cents today in a tax-free envelope, do so. It can grow and accumulate tax-free. You will draw it tax-free. And just think of things in your expense plan or your budget sheet that you might be able to cut back in. Um, maybe you don't need that extra cup of coffee. Maybe that extra trip to go out to dinner tonight could be something that you do a uh, uh, home home at dinner tonight. So just some of those things to carve out very small pieces um, will continue to move that threshold for you to be able to focus on that future. Uh, yeah, uh, I think back, uh, the uh, head of Kellogg got in the hot water by telling people they should eat cereal for dinner, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've seen it happen. We do have three young kids. It's happened a few times, but I think if we plan accordingly, look to right, look at and look at food prices, look at what's on sale. Plan your weeks. You can plan your meal plan all out week by week, and um, shop around the exterior of the, you know, of the of the shopping center, and um, don't get bogged down by those extra things in your cart. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, uh, he's kind of like M- Marie Antoinette, uh, basically sell- telling the public, uh, <laughs> let them eat cereal, right? We don't want to tell them that. We do want to make sure that we're health-based and health-conscious and being focused there. But I definitely think that, you know, hey, you can 
You can definitely make dinner at home that cuts down on cost. Um, just different items as you take a look at what goes on sale week over week. Um, try not to waste. You think of good ways to have leftovers, anything like that. I think that we can all put into a good plan. Um, I know we sure have done well. Um, I'm a I'm a farm girl, um, born and, and raised on a farm. So we just kind of know, hey, how do we get creative with some of these things? And um, it still can all be pretty tasty. And you can still then save and look forward to the future and make sure that we're planning ahead um, to forecast what we see coming. You know, like uh, one thing I found recently, uh, and I'm not the coupon clipper by any stretch. They got to make it as easy as possible for me or I can't be bothered. But the uh, CVS, where you used to get this uh, receipt as long as the Dead Sea Scroll, now they got an app, and you can get all that savings. And if you get this extra care cord, I think it costs you 20 bucks. You, they give you $10 every month, and then you buy all this other stuff that you're going to buy anyway. The key here is not impulse out. But you wind up mm-hmm. saving uh, $20, $30 a month on stuff that you're buying anyway, uh, you know, like sometimes I don't know how CVS does it. Sometimes I go there and I'm, I'm waiting for them to pay me money. <laughs> hey, you know, I think that they're all looking for ways to make sure you're shopping at CVS and not at some of their competitors. Um, I think we can say that in a bunch of different realms. Look at, you know, the online shopping shipped and, and Meyer and all of this, even to us, you know, if you take a look at a uh, middle-aged families raising children, you definitely spend more when you take the children with you, or even if you go on an empty stomach to the grocery store, then you will if you can actually take a look at maybe items are on sale, what are they looking at for the week? So I think if we're strategic in that and even segment out, we help a lot of our clients really look at what should we be spending weekly? And they try to stay within that realm budget-wise so we know this is what we're saving, this is our fun money, and this is actually what we're going to use in consumer goods. It's really helped, you know, really significantly significantly move that needle move the dial for them it's really not a whole lot different than making sure we're staying well diversified in the retirement portfolios and just looking at all the the costs and allocations hey and if you really want to go broke uh, take your kids with you to costco <laughs> <laughs> they try everything and then they want to buy it all right? and they want it all no self-control and many of you out there like me you have uh, limited self-control that's why you should only go shopping when you need stuff, not uh, as a rec- as a retail therapy, right, Mindy? You betcha. Not retail therapy. Make sure we know needs and wants and, and plan well. All right. Hey, Mindy, uh, tell us, how do we find you on the web? How do we connect with you and uh, read your work? Yeah, Carrie, best way to connect with me is you can go to wealthmichigan.com. Um, On there, you can read um, a bunch of our different news reports. You can request our toolkit as well. I really like to focus on education. Um, My latest book titled Cultivate Wealth, you can request your free copy there. It'll walk you through all the phases of retirement, savings, long-term care, and taxes. Um, Or you you can reach out via email, mindy at wealthmichigan.com. Happy to answer any questions, get the toolkit out, and really continue to, to plan well, to live well through a focused retirement. All right. Excellent. Hey, uh, we will have a link to Mindy's site, wealthmichigan.com, in the show notes of this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. While you're there, why don't you sign up for our free newsletter? We've got a new site up. It's called Inflation Cafe, where dollars go to die. Uh, kind of inspired by my personal experiences at a well-known coffee establishment that shall go unnamed. And, uh, Oh, I'm basically paying double what I was for the same drink three, four years ago. And uh, and plus the rewards have all been cut back and all that good stuff. Mindy, really appreciate you coming on. We will talk to you again soon. You have a great day. You too. Thanks for having me, Carrie. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.